Hey guys, welcome to the channel again. You know, it's Joe Jaguar. Um, just wanted to do this little video with you. Uh, what would I prefer? Uh, something like a four inch refractor. And this is just on a, a AZ3 mount. So nothing too complicated like an EQ2 or something like that. Or the Zumel 130 uh, reflecting mini doll. Now, you know what, it's probably unusable like that on the floor. So I think really you need uh, some type of table. So let me go get one. Okay, so really, what would I prefer? Five inch mini dog reflector or a four inch refractor? Uh, that's actually a tough call. And the reason is, well, as you see, I even put it on the table so it's no longer on the floor, but even looking straight up, um, the focuser, I'm still bending over here. So I, again, you probably need a table that's at least two to three feet uh, tall. So almost twice as tall for it to actually be at a decent adult height. And I can't, well, the Vixen bar is pretty much all the way. Uh, yes, I could probably loosen the rings and put the tube like that. However, I think it's really, it's not going to be counterbalance. See, and was, if I have eye pieces on there, it's just going to like fall over unless I uh, put weights on the back. So like, like this high is, you know, still not usable. So I think it has to be a taller table, at least twice, uh, twice as high. So I think this table is probably, uh, I don't know, 18 inches tall. So it probably needs to be 28, 30 inches. Okay, so that's the one downfall uh, of this, um, this guy here. Okay, the refractor still has a couple issues too. It, the tripod's at the highest. And if I were to look at the Zenith, you know, I'm down here as well. So either this guy, you would need a chair. If this was on EQ2, it probably would be at a better height. Now I could probably move this guy up on the rail, uh, probably another four inches, five inches. It won't make too much of a difference. I'm still going to uh, be bending down. So both of these kind of have an issue um, of the height problem. Now, a five inch reflector is actually equivalent to a four inch refractor. Now you're probably wondering why. Now I won't go into that uh, right now. Um, maybe I'll do another video why a smaller refractor equals a larger reflector. But anyway, these are about roughly the same. So here's what maybe you would um, have to take into consideration. The refractor, you never have to collimate, ever. Yes, this one is F6.5. It's gonna have some color fringing. It's also called CA, but um, this one is F5. It doesn't have CA or color fringing, but it has coma, the last 20% of the field of view. So either way, you have one aberration with one, a different one with the other. Both of them have a height problem uh, type of thing. Uh, you can correct it if you maybe have a seat on both of them, that solves that problem. Both of them collect about the same amount of light. So a four inch re refractor is gonna equal a five inch reflector. Now here's, the, here's the, the difference. Both of these are wide field. So both can get you wide field of views. But again, the refractor can do both nighttime and daytime stuff where the reflector can only do nighttime stuff also you never need as i said before you never need to collimate collimate or basically align it like you do this guy so that might be both of those things alone might be or might entice somebody then to get a refractor if they're going to collect the same amount of light this one can do both day and night and you never have to worry about alignment of the mirrors or lenses. It's always perfect. This guy, you're going to need periodic uh, collimation. 
and uh, uh, somebody's horning out there. Uh, so you, this one you do, do uh, and um, it can't be used for daytime. So again, this one has coma being a reflector. It doesn't have uh, color fringing. This one doesn't have coma, but it does have color fringing. So really, those weigh each other out. Now, the refractor actually might cost a little bit more than the reflector. You know, the reflector is cheaper to make. So really, I'm going to leave it up to you guys. What do you decide? So refractor, again, the rundown is day and night. It can be used. Now, if you're really interested in the daytime, I would then convert the 90 degree, that's this guy here, the diagonal, to a 45. And I mean, if you use the 90, basically you're, it's like looking at a mirror. It's just, the, let's say the bird is gonna be flipped left to right. I don't find that too, you know, too distracting. However, people that are really serious into the terrestrial viewing, that might, uh, those people might not like it. But if that is you, just buy a 45 degree diagonal, which is gonna be like that kind of angle, instead of straight up. Uh, and then there'll be the correct image uh, for daytime. You can find those used uh, on the used market uh, for like 20 bucks. And sometimes they'll be even brand new because so sometimes they get it with the scope and they don't want a 45 uh, angle and they get a 90, so they'll probably sell it. I've sold it for 20 bucks, uh, brand new. Uh, anyway, so again, this uh, can do the both daytime and nighttime. It is a little bit more expensive uh, but you'll never have to worry about the uh, uh, collimation of the mirrors or lens. It's always set. This guy, uh, you're, you're, you're getting a, a little bit bigger diameter, but really they both collect about the same light in the end. This can only be used in the night, uh, not in the day. Uh, this costs a little bit cheaper to make, but you do need to uh, align those mirrors. Now, sometimes people think, especially on the forums, it's easy to do and I don't think it's easy to do especially for a brand new person that's never been in the hobby or, or done it um, you know I think in the forums a lot of times people are thinking like you know they've been in the hobby 5 10 15 or 20 years and for them they can collimate it in five minutes ten minutes let's say but for a brand new person getting in the hobby I don't think it's as easy as some of them say Again, you need to, you know, and the, the reasons is, as you can see by the secondary mirror here, these, this spider can move a little bit up and down, left and right. And the, the, also the tilt of the mirror has to be at a certain angle to hit the, the mirror, the, the beam. Also, you need a laser collimator most of the times uh, to do it. Uh, most people are not going to know how to do it without like a laser beam. Um, so again, the, 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 that mirror uh, can be up, down, left, and right. The angle could be twisted, you know, if it gets out of alignment. And then you got to call me the laser back to the secondary and then onto like a, most lasers now have a 45 degree face and you try to get the return beam in the middle of the laser. It's not as easy. So a lot of times you hear uh, the people that's been in a hobby and especially in the forums, collimation is no no big deal but they're they're taking their situation with their knowledge and experience it's it's like somebody buying a car and then it's like take the engine apart and put it back together somebody new to cars is not going to know how to do that come on so sometimes that could be a big deciding factor in a reflector people don't even want to uh, do that now sometimes you have like an SCT you'd never have to worry about the primary mirror. You only uh, align the secondary mirror, you know, only. So which makes it a lot easier process to collimation on an SCT comparing to this one where you need that mirror to be perfectly centered over the focuser and then at the right angle where it's hitting the primary mirror directly in the center and then align the primary back to the secondary into the eyepiece, which isn't again easy. Anyway, guys, I don't want to scare anybody, but this is actually a kind of tough call. My personal opinion, if it was between these two, I still might go for this guy. A 4-inch refractor is going to collect the same light as this guy, 
You don't have to worry about collimation. It's set for daytime and night. Now, I know some people don't really care too much about the daytime stuff, but if you have a telescope that could do the daytime, you will sometimes use it for that because you can't, you can. So, you know, I probably would say in this instance, I probably would go for the ease uh, of this guy. Now, maybe if you were to have a six inch reflector against this guy, I might change my mind then, but that's a different video. This video is on a five inch reflector, F5 on a mini dog against this guy, which is also, they're both wide field. I think I'm gonna pick the refractor in this case. Um, and this one is an F6.5, not an F5. So it's a little bit better in the color fringing than the shorter one. Anyway guys, comment, like, and subscribe. If you like my channel, hit that button. Um, and I'll see you on the next video.